Welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here. You can find me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. And in this video, I'm going to be walking you through testing the thermal performance of the new 24 inch iMac. So the big term that you're probably here for is thermal throttling and whether that is an issue, issue on the 24 inch iMac. So there's a lot of things that we're going to test. I'm going to walk you through our testing guidelines and parameters and what we're looking for to help decide whether there are any thermal problems with Apple's latest redesigned machine. So why are we testing this? Why do we care? Well, Apple kind of brought us here. Uh, with one of its MacBook Pro models, Apple actually did have a big thermal throttling issue. And what would happen is the processor would get too hot and it would have to clock down to maintain its performance. And when it was clocking down, it was going well below the advertised clock speeds uh, that Apple was promising, that Intel was promising. And that was a problem. You're paying for something that's supposed to be like a 3.2 processor uh, and you're getting like, you know, 2.8 gigahertz, something like that, and that is not okay. Now, with the M1 processor that Apple's included on the updated, you know, iMac here, Apple doesn't advertise its clock speeds. So we, we can still find out what the clock speeds are and we can, we can see it in different applications. But the biggest thing here is Apple's not advertising that and we also don't have the Intel Power Gadget to monitor the processor over time. We can't you know, watch its temperature in real time and see its clock speed in real time. All of those things that we used to do with the Intel processors inside of Apple's machines. So we have to approach this one a little differently. We're actually gonna be using this guy right here. This is a high temperature infrared thermometer. Basically the laser ones, you point at something, you can see the laser and it gives you the temperature reading. This is a very high temperature one, very high end one that goes up to almost 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. We're not getting anywhere near there, but it's still a really nice digital infrared thermometer to give us an idea of the surface temperature of this machine. So we can't tell you what exactly the processor is on the inside, but we can tell what the surface temperature of the machine is. And being like 11 millimeters thick, uh, we should get a decent idea on how hot that processor is getting. Um, just to give you an idea on how warm the machine is actually getting. We're also going to be looking at the fans when they're kicking on and how long they're running and how loud they are, if that's going to be a problem. And then looking at the performance through benchmarks that we're going to run repeatedly. So we're going to run these benchmarks back to back to back to back to back and see if performance degrades the longer that it's running. So if you're exporting a really high-end HDR 4K video, you are processing a large batch of raw photos, uh, working on 3D rendering, anything that's going to be very CPU, GPU intensive, we want to know if there are going to be issues with it hitting its thermal max and dropping that clock speed or dropping performance over a long period of time as it keeps you know, hitting that processor. So that is what we're specifically going to be testing. We're gonna be doing it by running Cinebench. Cinebench is a benchmarking tool that we use quite frequently. It's R23, it's been optimized for Apple Silicon here. And we're gonna be running that, it takes about 10 minutes for each run, and then we're just gonna run it. As soon as it ends, we start the next one. And then at the end of each test, I'm gonna record the score as well as the front temperatures and the rear temperatures of the machine. Now, where are we gonna be measuring temperatures? We have a good idea where to start. Thanks to iFixit, who does their usual teardown of Apple's machines, we know exactly where that processor is. On the front of the machine, you'll notice it's about this middle, just off center from the, the right off center. So look at the center, go a little bit to the right, that's gonna be where the processor is. From the back, you can see it's gonna be right here, kind of behind the edge of the stand that closely lines up where the processor is located. But we're not going to just guess and shoot there. We're also going to be taking and moving our gun around and watching the temperature. So we're going to be looking for the peak temperature and that's what I want to record. I'm going to move around that area and I can see when the temperature is getting high, when the temperature is you know, dropping down a little bit and we'll know where the processor is and how hot this machine is getting. So that is what we're going to be looking for. And now let's go ahead and just start running some of those tests. So several tests in here, I've actually run about eight back to back to back to back to back to back, Cinebench R23 benchmark test, the multi-core versions. And I'm very happy with what we're seeing. So first off, I started off with about a 73 degree Fahrenheit front temperature and a 72 degree Fahrenheit back temperature. After the first test, it jumped up to 93 degrees on the front and 90 degrees on the back. The front did get a little bit warmer, could be the the way that the processor is facing, whether it's getting hotter or warmer, hotter or cooler on the back. It also just could be um, how the glass is using, uh, you know, dispersing that heat versus the metal. So anything like those, but about 93 on the front, 90 on the back. 
On the next test, it dropped down to 91 on the front and 91 on the back. So that's the end of the third test. So it dropped down just two degrees. I will say these are lower than what we saw before. I've seen some pretty darn hot Macs and this feels very cool to the touch. It's not a problem whatsoever. It feels warm, I guess, not cool, but it, it's not like, I'm not gonna like hold my hand here and feel like it's burning. Like I, I, know I can hold on to this comfortably without issue. So that is already a good sign. On top of that, if we look at performance, our first test earned a 7802. Our second test earned a 7800. And our third test, it jumped back up to 7802. We had some tests getting up to 7806, um, but they never dropped down below 7800. We actually kept the 7800 as our bottom line. So no matter how many times I ran this test, no matter how long the processor was going at its max you know, capacity there at under high heat, it never dropped its performance down, which is really what I wanted to see. The fans also weren't an issue. And that's actually why we saw the test, you know, test two was at 91 degrees at the end. And the first test ended with 93 on the front and 90 on the back. I think that's just because the fans are kicking on. So they kicked on about halfway through that first test. Okay, about the six minute mark, somewhere around there, I believe. I didn't even realize they were on. They were, they were that quiet. But so it, it turned on then and started to back off that temperature. Uh, we never saw it go above that 93.3 that I got, but it was usually hovering around 90 degrees overall. And, and that is no problem. So we saw that 90 degree temperature and when the fans kicked on, it actually pulled it back a little bit. So that's why it dropped down for that second test before getting up to, again, 93. It kind of hovered around that 90 to 93 point throughout all of our testing that we're doing. I keep gesturing over here and realizing you guys can't see my arm. So like, it's here, I have an arm. Uh, anyway, so we saw good sustained temperatures, didn't get too hot, didn't get too hot to the touch on the front or the back, and we saw no degradation in performance no matter how, how many times we ran the benchmark back to back to back to the back. That is all fantastic. And the fans themselves, when they did kick on, they were quiet. I was planning on taking a decibel reading for you guys and letting you know how, how loud the fans were, but I couldn't even pick up the fans over just the ambient noise in the room, uh, ambient noise in the studio, AC kicking on, anything like that. I couldn't even hear the fans when I'm sitting in a normal operating distance, which is incredible. I'd have no problems recording a podcast um, with onboard mics or my own mics when those fans are going at their max capacity. Also, amazing to see here on this machine. So when it comes down to it, after all this testing we've done, the temperatures that we've taken, the benchmarks that we've gotten, is there a problem with thermal throttling here? No, there's not, which is great because this redesign is gonna be lasting for several years. And if there was a problem with thermal issues on the first version, I'd be very wary about the next version with a beefier processor or even a high-end version of this that may have an M2 or an M1X processor going on inside. So it's fantastic to see that Thermals are just simply not an issue here whatsoever. Thermal throttling happens on every processor. It just does. It's when it gets too hot and it can't you know, push its frequency any higher. That's what's gonna hold that back. And you just have to worry at what point it's a problem. And in this case, there is no problem. No matter how much you tax that processor, it is not going to get too hot and hurt your performance. From cold processor to a hot processor after an hour of running a benchmark, it was still giving me the same performance across Geekbench um, and Cinebench, uh, even the Unity Haven didn't seem to have too much of an issue at all, regardless of how hot that processor was getting or how long it was staying hot. So all good news here. If you guys have any questions, let me know over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on the thermal limitations, thermal issues, no issues, on the 24-inch iMac. And if you're excited for maybe a bigger, more powerful version of this guy in the future. Let me know, and otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next video.